All right. Okay, so uh, last time we talked about the mole in broad terms. We talked about it being uh, a ratio between things we can weigh, grams, and things we cannot weigh, atoms. And we talked about the molar mass. And we look on the periodic table and we can find the molar mass on the periodic table. We calculated the average atomic mass, which becomes a molar mass. Why do we have to use average atomic mass and not just the atomic mass? Because there are a lot of isotopes. Excellent. Yeah, there's a lot of isotopes. So when you dig up some iron, you don't just get iron 56, you get 57, 58, 55. So we use an average, which is a weighted average, called the average atomic mass, and that becomes the molar mass. And we talked briefly about what the mole was. The mole is the number. Who remembers what the, num what the number is? Yeah, exactly. It's 6 times 10 to the 23rd things per mole. This needs to be updated. We're at about 7.4 right now. Um, so yeah, so the mole is a huge number. It's 6 with a giant pile of zeros after it. If that's thousands and that's millions and that's billions, that's trillions, it's a uh, thousand billion trillion, almost. About 0.6 billion billion billion. It's huge. So 6 times 10 to the 23rd things per mole. Now the things are usually atoms, but they don't have to be, but they're usually atoms. So uh, again, we're calling this Avogadro's number. We talked about it yesterday. And if you want to determine how many atoms you have in a certain number of moles, you do just like if you had dozens. If I said, I need three dozen donuts, then you just multiply 12 by 3. Well, if you need three moles, you just multiply 12, or sorry, 3 by 6 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay? If you needed half a dozen, you'd multiply 0.5 by 12. If you need half a mole, you'd multiply 0.5 by 6 times 10 to the 23rd. If you needed two dozen, you'd multiply 2 by 24. And if you needed two moles, you'd multiply 2 by 6.0 times 10 to the 23rd. So I'm not telling you anything that you didn't hear yesterday. Just want to make sure we start on a good note today. Okay. Any questions about molar mass or the mole or anything like that before we jump in to conversions, which is the meat and potatoes of molar mass, the unit we're in right now? Okay. Everybody got your calculator warmed up? Okay. Everybody got your note taken finger ready to go? Okay, let's jump right in. So, molar mass is once again the grams of something per mole and we find it on the periodic table. It is molar mass and it's grams per mole and we find it on the periodic table. What this means practically is if I ask you to go into the back and measure out one mole of nickel you're gonna come back with 58.7 grams of nickel or 58.693 if you happen to have a balance that goes out that far. Okay. Because this is the molar mass of nickel. It is the number of grams in one mole of that thing. And if I said, I could really use some tellurium, how much do you want? One mole, you're gonna come back with 127.6 grams of tellurium. Get the general idea? They're all different, they're not round numbers because of the atomic mass. And I said, you know what, I went to a Amazon and I needed to buy some iodine. How much did you buy? One mole. Oh, great. They had it at 126.9 gram container. Yeah, that was one mole, 126.9 gram. Amazon has everything. Okay, so that's how it works. And over here I have containers. So in this container I have one mole of sugar turns out to be 342 grams of sucrose. In this container, I have one mole of sodium chloride, table salt. Turns out to be 58.4 grams of table salt. In this container, I have one mole of silicon, 28.1 grams of silicon. In there is 28.1 grams of silicon. And I know it was gonna be one mole because I looked on the periodic table, it said 28.1 grams. I weighed out 28.1 grams and put them in the container. 
And then here, we got some tin, 118.71 grams of tin in here. And I know it's one mole because tin is 118.71 grams. Okay, is this starting to make sense? Yeah. You're like, so that's what that number is about. Yeah, it's, it's an actual really, really handy tool, something we actually use to determine how much we need. So if I need, and this is what's gonna happen to you in, in December, I need 0.2 moles of this chemical. Well, I can't weigh out moles. I can't weigh out atoms, but what I can weigh out is grams. So you take your moles and your molar mass and you rub them together and you'll know, oh, I need that many grams. Okay, and then you just go out and powder, powder in the container and into the container. Okay. So, and that's what we're doing today. We're gonna be converting between grams and moles. Okay, so really quickly, we're just gonna make sure we all know how to do, actually not really quickly, we're gonna take our time. We're gonna make sure we all know what molar mass means. Okay, so the average atomic mass of carbon is 12 grams. Mr. Burns is offering cookies to all the teachers, would you like two? Two, I can have two? Oh, thank you, I'll have the two biggest. Cookies, I got cookies. I'm gonna eat them after lunch. Do not envy. It's a sin. <laughs> no, just the two now. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> the average atomic mass is 12 grams of carbon. What is the mass of a mole of carbon? You can put it out. 12.01. Yeah, it's 12. That's what that means. If the average atomic mass of carbon is 12, that means a mass of carbon weighs 12 grams. What is the molar mass of copper? This is where you get to use your periodic table. First exercise of many. Yeah, about 63.5-ish. Yes. Okay, so yeah, you just look at the periodic table. There it is, boom. And what that means is, if I need one mole of copper, I'm gonna weigh out 63.5 grams, which is what I did over there. I wanted a container with one mole of copper, so I got some copper and I weighed out 63.5 grams, put it in the container, sealed it off, boom, one mole right there. Yeah, pretty simple stuff. Now, there is one thing I do need, to do need to mention, rounding. Some of you are the kind of person that likes to have as many digits as possible. You just you, I don't know what the, your deal is, but you like to have as many digits as possible. You like banging things into calculators and you need to have a whole bunch of digits and you're gonna like, I'm gonna use uh, 63.54612 multiplied by, um, some of us are just gonna round. We're gonna like 63.5, good enough. So whether you round early or round late, whether you use two digits or five, that's okay, okay? In a multiple choice exercise, you're always gonna have you're gonna have two numbers, you're not gonna have two numbers that are close together. The options would be like 31, 64, 18, and 12. Okay, they're not gonna be like 39.1, 39.15, you're not gonna see that. And on open-ended exercises, if you're in the neighborhood, if you're within one or two of what I have, we're good. Okay, so don't worry about weird rounding issues. As a general rule, I like three. Three is my favorite, three digits. But you can use more or less. Don't use one though. You can use two, three, four, five. Okay, so yeah, copper is 63.5 grams per mole. Next, what is the molar mass of nitrogen? 14.007, 14, 14, 14, no. Um, because if you would have been paying attention, after nitrogen, I wrote N2. Why did I write N2 and not just N? Exactly. Nitrogen is one of those crazy diatomics that's never by itself. So the nitrogen you're breathing right now, as about 78% of the air you're currently breathing, is N2. Remember Brinkelhoff? So if you don't remember the diatomics you remember here, we have a fancy little mnemonic, it's Brinkelhoff. And nitrogen is the N in the Brinkelhoff. So it's diatomic, it's gotta be N2. So if you saw just N, be like, N in something, then it would be 14, but nitrogen, nitrogen gas is N2, it's 28. 
So all we did was multiply the 14 by 2. Now in chemistry, numbers behind something refer to the thing right before it. Okay. In algebra, they just put numbers in front. We put numbers in front too, but they mean something different. In chemistry, it's a number right after it that says N2 means you have two Ns. All right. If that concept makes sense, give me a thumbs up. Make sure you're still awake. Cool, all right, moving on. What is the molar mass of CO2? This one's gonna take you a little bit longer. Please do not blurt it out. When you have the mass, the molar mass of CO2, please show it to a neighbor and compare your answers, and then we'll come back together in a couple minutes. Yeah, remember, cobalt is big C, little o. Hey, it's okay. Don't, it's okay to be wrong now. Just don't be wrong on the test. If you got a number that is similar to your neighbors, give me a thumbs up. Okay, looks good. All right. If you got a number larger than 10, raise your hand. Looks good. Larger than 20. Larger than 30. Larger than 40. Larger than 50. Ah, good. So yeah, you got about 44? So for those who are like, I didn't get 44, I got 55 million. Um, you, got one, you got one carbon and two oxygens. Carbon gets you 12, the oxygen gets you 16 and 16. Then you just add them together. Dan? Wait, so you only add, don't multiply, multiply? You can multiply the 16 by 2. But you, you add the 12 to the 16 and by 2. Yeah, don't multiply them together. It's kind of like if you were, uh, it's like your ingredients. Your molar mass is your ingredients. You need uh, one scoop of this and two scoops of this. Are we cool? Moving on. Okay, now, we're just gonna do practice for the rest of the day. Okay, so we're just gonna walk through practice for the rest of the day. And I gotta show you, uh, actually, yeah, not right now. Okay, we're, gonna take, we're not gonna take a lot of time on molar mass because I wanna spend more time on conversions, but uh, we do wanna make sure we know what we're doing because we're gonna need the molar mass when we're doing our conversions. So find calcium on your periodic table and show it to your neighbor. So if I asked you to get me a mole of calcium, how many grams are you coming back with? Yeah, about 40? Yeah, 40 grams of calcium. What about chlorine? Again, chlorine is the coal in the Brinkelhof. This is chlorine. Yeah, I know it can be weird, but yeah. You'll learn in a little bit that Ci2 would be, a, would be very, very unstable and you wouldn't see it in this class. You might see Cli4, but not Ci2.
If I walked in with a big glass bubble, and in that glass bubble was some yellow gas, and you said, what's in the bubble, Mr. Byers? And I said, chlorine. And you said, how much? And I said, one mole. You would say, oh, you have? Se 71 grams. Good. Remember, chlorine is diatomic. It is the coal of the Brinkelhoff. So you take your 35.2 and multiply it by two, and that bubble of chlorine which would actually be 22 point, be about this big, um, would weigh 71 grams. Uh, bubble, about this big. Question? I'm sorry, guys, I, I can't hear the question. Diatomic. Yeah, it's going to be written down. It's going to say CL2, um, and the reason we need to we, the reason we need to practice this is because eventually it will be up to you to determine when it's just CL and when it should be CL2, when something should be O and when some should, something should be O2. But right now, since it's CL2, diatomic, double your chlorine. Right. It is one mole of Cl2. So it's one mole of things that, that, that come together in a, in a pair. Um, so it is technically two moles of chlorine atoms, but it's one mole of Cl2. It's one mole of the, of the formula written. Is that clear? Excellent. So thanks for bringing that up. Um, all right. Now, if you slap them together, what should your uh, mass be if you have one chlorine or one calcium and two chlorines? 111 grams per mole. 111 grams per mole. Right. Right. Give me a thumbs up if you're good so far. All right. Now we're going to start adding small chunks of complexity. Um, we're going to use water a lot. Water is H2O, and the two finds itself between the hydrogen and the oxygen. To what does it refer? Hydrogen. The hydrogen. Good. It refers only to the hydrogen. What does it get like? Really never. It's just it's just applying the rules. It gets bigger, but it's just applying the same rules. Yes? Is the reason given is because it's lighter than the nitrogen in the air? It's lighter than the air, yes. Yeah. Um, helium is less dense. For the same volume, helium has fewer molecules, less mass, making it less dense. So, yeah, less dense, up it goes. And then you take physics, you find out how fast it goes. It's like not only does it rise faster than air, it rises this fast. Yeah. Okay, now here's something new, parentheses. Parentheses work just like they do in algebra. They refer to everything inside. So this, is, this chemical is called barium hydroxide. And barium hydroxide has in its formula one barium and then two OHs. So there's one barium and it's connected to two OHs. So again, the two refers to everything that's before it, in this case, two OHs. I would, yeah. I do an oxygen plus a hydrogen and multiply it by two. No, you would not multiply the barium because it's still just one barium and then two OHs. 
So you just, you're still adding things up. It's like you're weighing Legos. So you got one big Lego and then two Legos stuck together, two of those two Legos stuck together. I think I just thought of a lab. Ooh. I'm gonna write a Lego lab. I'm sorry? Ninjago? I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, Legos are, are hardcore, hardcore into the toys. The movies are just there to sell toys. Okay, barium is really, really big. Anyone need more time? All right. If you got a number larger than 100, give me a thumbs up. Excellent. Larger than 150. Excellent. Larger than 200. Okay. Great. So I got 171? Okay. And again, if you got 170 or 172, totally fine. Okay. Moving on. This is iron sulfate. When you got your answer, lean over to your neighbor and see if he or she agrees with you. Iron's in the middle, top middle, and then sulfur's right below oxygen. Good tactic. Do it yourself. Don't trust your neighbor. If there's one life, to, life lesson I can teach you is don't trust your neighbor's answers. All right. Anyone need more time? All right. Take another half minute. I'll just be playing with my angry bird. If you got a number larger than 100, raise your hand. Larger than 150. Larger than 200. 152? All right. Okay, now, the next one that comes up is pretty much the most complicated thing we do. It, this is like the top end of the complication we do. Um, and now we have a whole bunch of parentheses and a whole bunch of numbers. Before you start banging your calculator, how many aluminums do you see? Two. Two. How many SO4s do you see? There are three SO4s. So you can approach this multiple ways. You can say, well, I have three sulfurs and I have 12 oxygens. Or you can say, I have three SO4s. Okay? It's commutative. So go ahead and figure this one out. It's a big molecule. It's very heavy. You will, uh, again, when you figure it out, show your neighbor, compare your answer to your neighbors.
Looks like Almost ready. Everybody's ready. Take another half minute if you're still banging on your calculator. All right. If you got a number larger than a hundred, raise your hand. Larger than two hundred. Larger than three hundred. Larger than four hundred. Get about three forty something. Excellent. Okay. Now the molar mass is a tool. It's a tool we're going to use in conversions, which is really the meat and potatoes of where we are. We need to be able to convert between moles and grams, and now we have the tool to do it. And what we're going to be using is something I like to call a t-chart. We're going to do mole to mass conversions. We're going to convert between grams and moles. Instead of always having one mole of something, we're going to figure out how much when you, how many grams is it when you have three-fourths of a mole, or so on. So we're going to use a tool, and let me explain how this tool works. The first thing you do to make this tool, we're going to call it a t-chart, is you make a t. Just like that. Or a cross with a long edge. Or a cross with a short edge. Or a sword. Sword. Make a sword chart? Okay, so we can make a sword chart. There we go, now it's a sword chart. In, this, in our T chart or our sword chart, we're going to write what we start with up here. This will be our starting box. And there will always be three things in each box. Every box is going to have three things. What's going to be those three things? You're going to have a number, you're going to have a unit, and you're going to have a chemical. Every box is going to have those three things. Every box, each box. We'll have those three things. Each box, except for the one below our starting box, the starting box gets a squiggle because nothing goes down there. Nothing goes in that box. Okay. And what's going to go here is our molar mass. Molar mass is going to go in that box, or those two boxes. And we're just going to practice this for the rest of the day until we are mole mass conversion masters. Okay. So here's our first example. Just walk through it with me. Here we go. Sodium has a molar mass of 23 grams per mole. Hey, we didn't have to look at the periodic table. It told us what it is. How many moles do you have in 115 grams? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make our T-chart. And we're going to write down our starting unit. Give us a squiggle because nothing goes right there. We're going to write down our starting unit. Now here's the important thing. The starting unit will never have two units. It would never be gram per mole. It'll always be just one thing. In this case, it is what? Grams. So our starting three is 115 grams of sodium. 115 for the number, gram for the unit, sodium for the chemical. I wrote that kind of small. Can you see that in the back? Yes. Okay. People in the front row are saying yeah. 
Yes, they can. I'm sure they can. Okay, so we've written down our starting three. Now here's the crux of the T-chart method. You bring down your unit and your label. So you're going to bring down your grams of sodium and that's going to go to the bottom box down there. And in the top box is going to be the other thing. So if grams is down below, what's going to be up top? The mole. The mole of sodium is going to be up top. If grams is down below, then mole has to be on top. Now if mole was down below, gram would be on top. If mole, if we started with moles, then mole would be on the bottom and gram would be on top. But since we started with grams, gram is on the bottom and mole is on the top. Yeah. Give me a thumbs up if you understand what we did so far. Let me gauge understanding. Looks pretty good. Okay, great. Next, we need to write in our molar mass and it tells us what the molar mass is. The molar mass is 23 gram per mole. Now, you're driving on the, you're driving on the road, you look at your speedometer, it says 65 miles per hour. Is that 65 miles per how many hours? Or is it 65 miles per one hour? It's always per one. Similarly, molar mass is always number of grams per one mole. So the mole up here is going to get what line? A one. It's going to get a one. And down here we're going to write 23. This is the molar mass. 23 gram per mole. But Mr. Bart, you wrote your fraction upside down. I know, um, <laughs> which you can totally do because it's not a fraction, it's a conversion. The molar mass is not a fraction, it's a conversion. So if I went to the donut shop and I asked for 12 donuts, how many are they, they going to give me? Whoa. Yeah, and they're going to call it a, a, dozen. a dozen. Or if I go in and like, I'd like a dozen, how many are they going to give me? 12, and I'm going to call it a dozen. Okay, there are conversions, they're the same thing. They're not fractions. So, here's my favorite part. Don't you love it, guys? Don't you love it in, uh, in math where you get to cross stuff out? Like you have an equation that says y equals 3x squared over 2x, and you get to cross things out? Yeah, everybody loves crossing stuff out. You're like, all right, I'm going to kill that x and that x, and hey, we're, we simplified it. Love that. <laughs> okay. Would it, would it be easier if I just did y equals 2x over x, and then you just cross out the x's? <laughs> well, anyway, um, so once you've got this down, you can cross out the unit you don't want. Grams of sodium is on top and grams of sodium is on the bottom, so you get to cross them out. And you're left with your goal unit, the, the unit your exercise is looking for. No. I'm glad you mentioned that, though. No. And I'm glad you mentioned that. Do not cross multiply. You divide. Yes, it is. So you divide. Do not cross multiply. I know it's going to feel like you should. Please do not cross multiply. Okay? These are not ratios. Okay? This is a mathematical function. Divide the top by the bottom. Do not cross multiply. So, you know how we crossed out that other box? Uh huh. Why don't you just leave the 23 there and then you have to cross out a box? Yeah. I don't know what you mean. Because you're already dividing the 115 by this box. Oh, why didn't I put the 23 right here? Yeah. Because this is the conversion. One mole is 23 grams. This, our starting unit has no conversion. And this is a good segue to the next thing I have to say. Okay, guys? I realize a lot of your teachers are stupid. We're all stupid at some point. And sometimes you find shortcuts that work better, especially in math class. Here's the thing. There are definitely shortcuts in, this, in, chem in chemistry conversions. But realize, if you learn this system, this is what you're doing today. This is what you're doing next week. And this is what you're doing in December. 
Okay? But, but here's the great thing. When you learned how to ride a bike, did you learn only how to ride a bike for one block? Yeah, I learned how to ride No, once you know how to learn, once you learn how to ride a bike, it, you're not limited by your distance, right? You could be like, I could do a mile. Yeah. Well, once you learn the system, if this is easy today, this will be easy in December. Okay? But if you don't learn this, this is going to give you fits. Does that make sense? Yeah. So there are definitely shortcuts, and I, I accept that there are. You're going to find them online. There are shortcuts to doing simple conversions. But if you don't master the T-chart now, December is going to hate you. Okay. So are we ready to move on? Yeah. So again, we divide 115 by 23, and we find that the answer is 5 point, let's pretend that's a 5, 5.0 moles of sodium. Yes. Yeah, actually, yeah. Um, it would mean that 115 grams is 5 moles. Yeah. Okay, next. Actually, before we go on, I want a thumbs up that you understand what we're, what we're doing. Excellent. Everyone but people who are looking on their phone know what we're doing. All right, so how many grams are equal to 3.5 moles of calcium chloride? So again, make our T-chart. Now we're doing a little bit different. We're actually starting with 3.5 moles of calcium chloride. We're starting with moles this time. So I've written my T-chart. I've written down my starting three. What's my next step? Exactly. Move down my unit, mole, and my chemical, calcium chloride. And if that is moles, what goes on top? Grams. Grams of calcium chloride. Mr. Bars, I don't want to write those other three things. Again. Trust me, if you're writing all three things in each box, it will take you an extra second and a half per box. But if you master this, this becomes very easy. If you don't master this, you'll be one of those people who are like, I hate stoichiometry. That's what it's called. That's what this is called. Stoichiometry. Yeah, go find one of your, one of your peers who's finished chemistry and say, stoichiometry. And they'll be like, ah, and they'll pee themselves. <laughs> Because they hate stoichiometry. Okay, so, so guys, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to make you laugh, but um, if this is grams and this is moles, where does the one go? With the moles. And looking at your previous exercise, go up three inches, what is the grams of calcium chloride per mole? 111? All right. So. Again, now you've got your numbers on top, which is cool. So you go, what do you get to do? Multiply. multiply. So you just multiply 3.5 by 111, and you get that many grams of calcium chloride. Oh, you want me to cross? The, you're right. I should cross out the unit. Bye bye, moles of calcium chloride. Yes. It is always one in September. We're gonna learn, oh, it's all, okay, it's always one um, when we're looking at mole, gram per mole. Gram per mole will always be one, always be one, always be one. But in December, we're gonna learn something called the mole ratio, where we're changing chemicals. And when we change chemicals, then it will no longer be, that part will not be one. It'll be like one to two, three to four, three to two, one to four. But when it's gram per mole, it's always gonna be one. Excellent question. Um, so we can do this? We can do this math? You got something in the neighborhood of 380 something? Yeah. All right, cool. Again, 388.5, 389, 390. I'm fine with all those numbers. What is the mass of 0.46 moles of silicon dioxide? So see if you can put this in yourself. 
So take it from the top, put in a T-chart, put it together, find the molar mass of silicon dioxide, and I will um, watch you. Excuse me. Okay, how to find the molar mass? All right, so moles is always going to be one because it's going to be grams per mole, like miles per hour. Grams per mole. Yep. So mole will always be one. And then, so SiO2 is one silicon. So, as a look, do a side math. So, one silicon and two oxygens. So, Write down the mass of a silicon. I like to write the whole thing out and then put the numbers right below it. So put a the mass of the silicon under the silicon. So SiO2 is one silicon and two oxygens. So I like to write out SiO2, write the 20, well, write that number under the silicon. And then under the O2, write that number plus two. I'm sorry, times two, then add them together. And add them together. So you have the weight of a silicon and the weight of two oxygens, and you add them together, that will be the molar mass of the whole molecule. 60 sounds great. No, that is our starting unit. That's not molar mass. That's our starting unit. So our starting unit is moles of, of silicon dioxide, but our molar mass is going to allow us to convert that to grams. Mm -hmm. And then I put that right there. Mm -hmm. yep. But it's supposed to divide. And it, no, in this case, it's going to multiply. Um, because moles is up top and moles is going to come down below. So our, our units are going to come down and our 60 is going to go in the top box. Then we're going to multiply across. Sometimes we multiply, sometimes we divide, depending on what we're looking for. Anyone else having a little trouble getting started? Anyone else have a pickle? Oh, cucumber, okay. <laughs> Guys, we have sev seven minutes left. I'd like to do one more if we could. What did you get for the molar mass of silicon dioxide? 60. 60? And then you crossed out your moles of silicon dioxide? And you multiplied across? What is 0.46 times 60? 27. And the unit is? Point six? Point six. Point six. And grams silicon dioxide. Mr. Byers, is the unit important? Yes, the unit is important. Okay, so I'm hearing some chatter, and the thing I'm hearing a lot is how did I get 60? Okay, so the molar mass is based on the periodic table, so we write our formula down SiO2. Silicon, we're going to look at the periodic table. 
I, I see 28 for silicon. And then oxygen is 16, and there are two of them. 16 by 2. So I'm adding my 28 to my 32, and that's how I got my 60. Is this clear? Yeah. Question. Yeah, again, I know it's, it feels like it's, it's a lot of extra work, but take the extra couple seconds for two reasons. One, you can see when your units cancel out. And two, if you go off the rails, I can see your work. If I just see a bunch of numbers, I'm like, I have no idea what these numbers represent. If you write your units, I'm like, oh, this is mole of silicon dioxide. It should be grams. Then I can help you. Yeah. Dustin? Grams SiO2 over mole SiO2? Uh, the, like the 27.6, the last one. Oh. Oh, you want me to write it that way? I can totally write it that way. Yeah. I, li I actually like to write it that way. It doesn't really matter. It's, it's grams of, it's like, it's like um, pounds of spaghetti. So grams of SiO2, it's just a unit. But I like to write it that way because it fits in the box better, but yeah, you're right. Okay. So next one. I'd like to do one more of the remaining five minutes. We have tons of labs, but in order to do the labs next week, we would not know what we're doing. So I'd like you to do this one all on your own. And when you got your answer, I'm going to turn the lights on. When you got your answer, show your neighbor. And please show all the steps so you can compare your work with your neighbor. <laughs> 